All right, thanks you guys for being here today. Um, first, I want to thank Matt Toro, like everyone else is doing. Um, at the Esri conference earlier this uh, last summer, ran into Matt in the hallway and he said, Mark, we're doing this great mapping Grand Canyon conference, you know, telling me about it. And I'm thinking the first thing that comes to me is, whoa, who's going to talk about the birds expedition? You know, and I'm thinking, that's the most important thing. That's where I come at it from. And he's like, nobody. I said, can I? He goes, yeah, sure. <laughs> come on and let's, let's do it. So immediately I'm like, awesome. And I started thinking, and I'm a geographer. Uh, I'm lucky enough that I got a degree in geography in 1992. Um, I came to geography from wayfaring around many other degrees, um, not being too good of a student, not being that interested in school, being really interested in hiking and camping. And then I took a course right before I was about to graduate called Remote Sensing and fell in love with it and fell in love with mapping. And it was kind of one of those things where there's a, I'll date myself with a How Harry Met Sally quote, if you remember that movie. And at the end of the movie when he said, I came here tonight because when you know who you want to spend the rest of your life with, you want the rest of your life to start right now. That's how I felt about mapping and remote sensing and GIS. And I've used that in talks before. And every time after the talk, someone comes up to me and they're like, that's what happened to me. So hopefully there's some of you in the audience that are kind of the same way. And I immediately just got completely wrapped up into to mapping and wanting to do whatever I could to uh, work with in, in cartography. Graduated in 1992 and said, okay, now it's good, I gotta go find a job. So I did what most people do, looking for a job when they graduate. I jumped on the Grateful Dead West Coast tour for about a month and <laughs> did nothing and landed back in Flagstaff and said, okay, now I really gotta go find a job. And I did what most people in Flagstaff do. I went and sat at Macy's Coffee House for a half a day trying to find a job where I ran into someone who said, you should go talk to those folks over at the um, Glen Canyon Environmental Studies. And I don't know if many of you guys know who at the Glen Canyon Environmental Studies was, but it was kind of the original study along to look at the effects of the dam um, through Grand Canyon on the environment. And so I walked over there and met some people and got hired to go uh, work in Grand Canyon. And I was able to, that was in August, in November, I went on my first Grand Canyon River trip, and I was going to be a survey assistant. And I just was beside myself, like, oh, you got to be kidding me. You know, here it is. I, my career, you know, I'm a geographer, I'm a mapper, I'm working in Grand Canyon. And I was so excited, and I'm even more excited because the person who took me on the trip, that the survey is right here today, who I haven't seen for a long time, and this was in 1992 in November. And I was so excited to just do research and be on the river that I just remember the first day we camped that night and all excited. Next day we go have lunch at Hot Nana Beach about 16 miles below Lee's Ferry and we're finishing lunch and Mark Gonzalez over here says, okay, Mark, we're going to need to go. I was a rod man. And it's like, okay, Mark, you're going to need, we're going to need to go get a point on this uh, rock out in the river after lunch because we were doing some control work. And being who I was, 23 years old, doing anything I could to get involved, you know, in the field of mapping and being in the field, Mark's still eating a sandwich and stuff, and I take my Hickson rod and start swimming out to the rock. I don't know if you remember that. And I'm on there, and I look back, and they're just, everyone's laughing at me. They're like, we got to go across the bow, we got the river, we got to set up the survey instrument. Wait a second. But at that point, I was willing to do anything to get on there. And fell in love with Grand Canyon, fell in love with my job, which was, um, which continued on. And the whole time was very brought to with reading everything I could and uh, trying to learn as much as I could about the canyon, was really drawn to this 1923 bird's eye survey expedition because it was so similar, it seemed like it related so close to what we were doing. And that's what I want to talk about today. And a little bit of a background on the 23 bird's eye expedition was, it was a USGS expedition that was primarily um, run to look at locations uh, potential locations to build dams through Grand Canyon. Okay, so at that time, 1921, 1922, there were some earlier surveys up on the San Juan looking at some wider areas to potentially put dams um, that they can put in there. Reclamation, uh, a few years earlier, had already spread off and it was looking at more of a uh, two dam system uh, as far as controlling the river. As, as far as controlling the water, but USGS was looking and kept actively 
looking at flow data and mapping geology to try to find more locations, um, as I'll talk about in a little bit, um, Claude Leroux, the, uh, hydro the hydrologist on the trip, was looking at, was trying to locate several locations to put many dams going through. Also, along with their trip, they were going to continue a level line that they had to Lee's Ferry and that the topographer on the trip had uh, a point 251 miles below that they were going to tie to. And essentially, this was going to close the elevation survey, the level between there, and really finally link that great unknown. So before, where you had Powell and you had Stanton and you had other trips that came through, we like to, I like to view these as more of your explorers. And they were doing mapping, but they were more exploring through the area. Whereas this 1923 bird's eye expedition trip was the first true mapping endeavor. Because to find, they weren't mapping specific locations of dams that, uh, were, that were predetermined. They were looking at the entire area, potential locations for dams. So there was, so they really needed to map the entire area or get some topography in there to locate um, those area, uh, potential areas. So primarily it was looking for dam locations and bringing this um, level line down through. The neat thing too that draws me to the expedition was the people in the process and doing it. It's the first time reading and looking in the history record that, these, that you really saw a well thought out, well put together um, river trip through Grand Canyon that you may kind of, in my opinion, that you might kind of want to be part of. And this was the trip, uh, this was uh, the men right here that uh, went down the trip. I'll talk about each of them a little bit individually. Uh, we'll go over a little bit of what they encountered in there and then look at some of the products that came out of the bird's eye um, survey that stand, that really stand the test of time and are still being used today. Um, there were 10 men that went down river. In this picture, you see nine. Um, the story is, is that one of the men that is not pictured, Frank Dodge, was uh, sleeping off a drunk and didn't make it into the picture. So for early on, there was, uh, early on, there was thinking that there might have only been nine that went downstream, but there was actually 10. And that might give you a little bit of insight that certain things may not have changed too much as far as river trips going through the canyon. Um, or surveying, exactly. So here's the, uh, here is the extent of the trip where they did, where they ran the level line from Lee's Ferry down to uh, Diamond Creek. When they, when USGS was putting this expedition together, they selected Claude Birdseye as the chief topographic engineer and organize and lead the survey. He was 45 years old. Um, he was regarded as a brilliant topographic engineer. He was very capable. He was a natural leader. He seemed to be, of all the folks that came on the trip, the one shoe-in that was absolutely um, going to be um, the, his position in the trip was, was solidified as he was going to be the leader here. Next thing, when he put his trip together, he needed to find a head boatman to take him down. He chose Emery Kolb as his head boatman on the trip. Um, it was a little bit of a, um, there was some concern as far as picking Emery Kolb, or maybe not some concern, but it was, it was thought that perhaps Bert Loper might have been a better lead boatman since he had led um, some of the survey expeditions up in San Juan. And the reason that uh, I've read that it is expressed that he, that they chose Kolb was he had more experience in the canyon. He was younger, Bert was much older, and Bert had already had some bad blood with some of the other, uh, one of the other members that was gonna be on the trip going downstream. Um, the trip, like other survey trips or uh, uh, river trips or expeditions, were not devoid of conflict or um, issues and that even before the trip started, Emery Kolb and Birdseye had some uh, disagreements over who would have, uh, Emery Kolb wanted 
exclusive filming rights and photographic rights, as you know, the Culp Studios on the South Rim of the Canyon, they made their living by showing the movies and um, using that type of, of media to make money. However, uh, Birdseye was not accepting to say that they would, he would have exclusive rights, that LaRue, the uh, hy hydrologist, would also have the right to make motion pictures, as would some other uh, movie crew that would be visiting them through the trip uh, at some other point. So, Kolb, even before the trip, uh, was a little bit miffed, or they were maybe at odds, and uh, even once during the trip it happened, and it was probably not his finest hour, as I'll talk a little bit later about some of the boating and some of the mishaps that may have that happened during the trip. Um, after choosing his head boatman, we needed, uh, he needed to choose the other boatman that would go along with him. And for those three other uh, boatmen that he chose, he chose Elwyn Blake on the left, Lee Lint, the guy in the middle with the, uh, with the guns, and Lewis Freeman, okay? And most of what I'm, what I'm showing you, so much of this is uh, directly from um, Diane Boyer and Bob Webb's 2007 publication, Damning Grand Canyon, which is, just, which is an excellent book that really covers the uh, entire bird's eye expedition. But these guys, it was interesting choice of boatmen. Again, Bert Loper could have come, but you have here the two young studs, so to speak, on the left who are very capable, uh, very energetic, um, very willing to work. And then a peculiar choice in uh, Lewis Freeman who at one time may have been um, an athletic person, may have been fit and uh, good to go down the river, but he kind of let himself go. Um, he didn't seem like in everything I've read, he worked that hard. Um, the reason that Birdseye brought him was he was really good with publicity and getting the story out. I don't know if anyone's in, has anyone ever seen this 1924 National Geographic on the Birdseye Expedition. This is written by Lewis Freeman, as well as, um, I think the Scientific American art article was written by him as well. So he was really good at promoting the trip and getting the information out. Uh, later in the trip, he would be um, resented some by the younger guys who seemed to have to do all the work and do all the portaging um, when the younger guys really wanted to do, just run all the rapids and not worry about it. But um, these were the boatmen that were chosen. Um, Chief geologist position was Raymond Moore uh, out of the University of Kansas. Um, he wasn't the first choice. He, uh, Sydney, Cho Sydney Page was the first choice um, to join the expedition, but he refused to go with another person that was going to be on the trip, so they had to go to their second choice as far as um, geologist Raymond Moore. He uh, did a lot of, he did some great mapping. He also did a lot of um, sketching of the side canyons and, um, and provided a, um, a lot of other sketches of the participants as well. Okay. And then Clyde LaRue. This is a hydrologist. And this is a person I've referred to as a few times as people that, uh, that a person that folks have not gotten along with in uh, prior trips. He was the chief hydrologist of the trip. He's going to measure tributary and stream flow, um, examine and photograph possible dam sites, and designate um, the sites that were going to be used for detailed surveys. So it was LaRue who really came up with an idea of wanting to put a lot of dams along the system and fill it, e essentially saving every bit of water through a couple of high dams and then some lower dams to, uh, to uh, control the water going through Grand Canyon. Um, he was along on the trip. He was heady. He was cantankerous. He had gotten, um, he had had a hard time with some of the folks throughout the trip as well as before and after at his, jo at his jobs. Um, but he was um, a member nonetheless. So the chief, the topographer of the trip was Roland Burchard. Um, and he was, an, he was probably the most, um, really the most, uh, a very accomplished topographer, uh, very, um, very capable. He was uh, Birdseye's right-hand man, and he would be the co-author of the maps that would come out, uh, the plan and profile maps that would come out at the end of this project. Um, the last person besides the, sh the chefs was Frank Dodge, and Frank Dodge is, was the rod man. He was the one who went out and held the rod to measure the level um, down 
And he was uh, an extremely capable human being. He was a fantastic swimmer. He grew up in Hawaii. He was what they call the true hero of the trip, where saving um, Emery Kolb's life, or p potentially saving Emery Kolb's life when he capsized an upset rapid and dove in and swam and got him and brought him out. He was, um, like a lot of people, well, some people we may all know, he was self-destructive. He was a wanderer and lost his life um, too soon, but he was, had an alcohol problem, but he was, by all accounts, he was extremely capable and liked by everyone on the trip. And then the last folks on the trip were the cooks. So on the left was Frank Word. He was on the trip until Havasu Creek, where he hiked out. And Felix Kaminsky hiked in to be the chef for the rest of the trip. And it was viewed as a very jovial, not much is known about Frank Word, but Kaminsky was viewed as a very jovial Polish guy with a strong Polish accent who really brought a lot of um, laughter and lightheartedness to the trip. So what did they bring down and how did it go? Um, they brought a, a bunch of equipment down and this is one of those things going back to my experience and knowing a lot of bringing equipment down and survey equipment through the canyon, keeping it dry, keeping it safe and getting it through is not an easy task. But they brought and did their mapping on plane tables and, and Allidades, and they did a lot of mapping along uh, through in the mouths and everywhere they could where they needed to to look for potential dams. They brought their stadio rods. They had a radio so they could actually listen in, and they actually did get quite a bit of news throughout the trip. Um, photographic equipment. There are three people that had cameras and documented the trip. Um, barometers, tripods, compasses, levels, tapes, glasses, and field books. And so you can see they were uh, mostly primarily mapping, as you can see in the pictures on the lower left, but also collecting stream data and stuff like that. They needed boats to get down. So the, what boats, what did they use for boats? They, need, they needed four boats for the trip. Three of them were being stored up at Lee's Ferry that were used on previous survey expeditions, but they had one more specially built so that they brought four boats down to do their survey work. The one on the upper left is um, there at Grand Canyon. It's the Edith, I believe. Prior to going, on the lower left-hand corner, you see them sinking the boats and waterproofing them by filling them with water so that they would float. And you can see again with all the supplies on the lower right with them getting ready to go, um, getting ready to leave in a day. It's looking like somewhat of a typical river trip. So what did it look like when they went? Well, real quick, I had an embedded video that's not playing, so I'm going to switch over and show the first ever video made by the USGS was a motion picture camera for, uh, uh, that LaRue ha had on this trip. And this is the actual 1923 bird's eye trip. I don't have it exactly uh, put up. Oops, is it not showing? Well, maybe I could just go back to my show. I don't have to show. Okay. Sorry. Well, that's you. All right. No video. Go to YouTube. Pull up the 1923 Bird's Eye Expedition. Watch it. It's really awesome. It was, it was going to be a super cool part to look at. <laughs> but we will move on. So what I was showing in the video was that uh, black and white video of the boats going through and what the surveyors looked like laying on the deck of the boat, bringing the, the rodman over to the other side to get his level line, to, um, to get him to the next point um, so that you can see it in action. But they did not, they were met with, um, with their challenges. I said earlier, they, it, was, it, it was a very well organized trip. It was very capable. You saw a lot of firsts in this trip where you had um, where they were getting resupplied every place they could uh, throughout the river. You had resupplies come in at Hans Canyon, at Bright Angel Creek, at Havasu. Um, they had their friends come in. They had girls come in. Edith Cole came down to hang out with her, uh, her potential beau, Lee Lint. Uh, and then uh, 
actually jumped in the boat and ran Hans Rapid with him, which was with what, from what I read, read, read is the first ever woman, woman running a rapid, a major rapid in Grand Canyon was the first time that happened on this trip. But they also um, saw, some, saw some problems that they had to deal with. Some of the boats were um, rotted bottoms, bottoms from the previous trips and they had soggy bottom boats that they had to deal with a lot. In this case, they had brought a, a canvas boat, a fold up kayak kind of a thing that was gonna be used for the rodmen and as they were portaging around, this is a picture of that boat getting trashed and unusable and ended up just getting pushed downstream. Um, in this instance, this is one of the boats that uh, Emery Kolb hit a rock in, uh, at Badger Rapid at Eight Mile relatively early in the trip that they had to come and pull it up and repair that boat. Um, Emery Kolb would also flip in um, Upset Rapid and had a couple of uh, pretty extreme runs there which would lead to some of the boatmen, um, some of the other boatmen uh, perhaps resenting a little bit, uh, maybe not resenting, but um, uh, questioning his uh, river leader, uh, his guiding leadership through the trip. As they went down and progressed through the river, this is um, a, a, some pictures of around Lava Falls where some fl uh, flooding happened and uh, backed them up for I believe it was nine days, they ended up getting to Diamond Creek uh, later than expected, which spurred a lot of the media to think that they were perhaps wrecked, that they were lost, that something had happened. So news had got out that they may not, that they may have had, um, had problems on the trip. What actually happened was they had to hole up, wait for the floodwaters to subside, and then move along. The trip eventually ended in um, Needles, California. They did. They had a successful um, run of their level line down to tie in with a point that Bertrand had above um, at mile 251, and they got down to Needles and they pulled out. And the interesting, well, I'll, I'll skip that. But um, they pulled out at Needles and they were done. So, what were the products that essentially came out of the trip? Here you have a, a graph that shows Larue's. Um, potential dam sites surveying, you know, dam sites surveyed through air, uh, several dams that could potentially be put in. None of them ended up getting built. Um, none of the dams he proposed through this trip ended up getting built at the locations they did. But nonetheless, they were surveyed. And by running that topography and that elevation profile down, these maps were produced um, in the end. So in the end what they had what they produced were these plan and profile maps. It was 21 sheets with 14 plan maps and 7 profiles. And you can see here for those of you guys who maybe are looking at this map for the first time it looks very similar to any of these uh, river guides that you might, if you've ever gone down Grand Canyon, that you might see. So there's good, excellent detailed topography with 50 foot contours at the mouths of most streams. There's accurate elevation um, lines coming down. And they were, um, they were maps that were gonna prove to be very useful. They were very useful to be uh, as base maps, to be mapping uh, geology along the river and what we found in looking at, um, looking at uh, Richard Corderoli, who you saw talk yesterday, wrote a paper in 2012, I think, when part of this old timers uh, historical society up there at Grand Canyon, looking at the evolution of the, Grand the printed Grand Canyon, the printed Colorado River Guide in Grand Canyon, and how and, and what's used and by who. And I kind of cobbled these all together to look at trips going through the canyon. Um, James White, no prior geographic knowledge. Powell has his government map, as you saw yesterday, with that big void. Um, Stanton had Powell's maps, which were not much. Uh, Flavel got St uh, Stanton's report. Uh, Julius Stone reported that he had Powell and then Dellen Bowes, A Canyon Voyage. So if you've read Dellen Bowes, A Canyon Voyage, there's some really good accounts on the location of things, um, some maps in there, but 
no real continuous maps through the canyon. And then in 1923, you could see Bird's Eye Expedition, and almost immediately in 1924, these plan maps became available, and you start seeing evidence of them being used. As Richard uh, showed in his paper, Clyde, Clyde Eddy and Parley Galloway referred to the Bird's Eye maps as they were going through. Uh, the Carnegie Caltech trip led by Frank Dodge, the Rodman um, that we talked about earlier, map geology on those, along with starting to um, use photogrammetry. Neat thing about this trip and the maps that they made is it was really at the end of this um, plane table and um, allidade mapping technique. Early in the 30s, photogrammetry started coming in. There was a different way to generate topography. So this is one of the last great um, endeavors of this type of survey and going through uh, a place like this. As you proceed on too with the maps, you start to see that um, Norm Nevels uh, started creating, taking these maps and cutting them up and creating a scroll map. So these long, you have this long, thin section of river so you can make more like a, a scroll map that somebody can follow through the canyon. Les Jones, a great exhibit up at NAU with Les Jones with the bucket head, Gold Pro, and his aluminum kayak made a scroll map that he would sell um, to river guides, which is what you see on the left there. That led to the next generation of river guide, which is the Belknap guide, and then the Larry Stevens guide. And as you can see, even today, um, 95 years later, that the base map for a lot of these river guides are still the bird's eye um, plan and profile maps that they brought, that they brought up. Okay, uh, in closing, the trip ended. Um, it, Great stuff came out of it. These young men who were boatmen went on to continue to be topographers and work on more expeditions, survey trips. We don't know what happened to Felix Combs Kaminsky. I think he became timeless and turned himself into Matt Kaplinsky, who you're going to be hearing next. I don't know. We'll see. Another Polish guy, but maybe without the accent. And lastly, last, I just want to show a picture that this was a photo taken on when I was working down there for 15 years. This photo was taken about 25 years ago with all of us who were absolutely enamored and taken aback by Birdseye and his expedition kind of going to an old school, old world photo with the newer generation of surveyors. And as I look at it, I realize that was 25 years ago. I'm gonna be 50 this year. That was half my life ago. I'm feeling really old and I need to get back down there in the canyon. So thanks a lot, you guys.